The following is CKUW 95.9 FM original spoken word programming created by volunteers in the community, made possible by generous listener support. Good morning. You're listening to Say It Sister on CKUW 95.9 FM. It's 8.03. We had a little late start today. I'm Jen Unwin, and I'm here in the studio with my co-host... Jackie. And our secondary co-host... Chickadee. Thank you, Chickadee and Jackie. Um, We have uh, an exciting show for you guys today. I'm just going to start off by having a quick look at the weather. So, delightful. It is another beautiful day in the peg. (laughs) (laughs) The wind was blowing away when we got here. Well, today we're uh, uh, having a conversation with Chickadee Richard. Um, one of the things that we were sort of discussing on our way here and uh, um, we sort of looked at for for uh, our discussions on matriarchy and issues along those lines um, was to do a little bit of uh, um, drum history, I guess we would call it. So, over to you, Chickadee. What, what, what can you share with us about the drum? Well, um, there's a lot of myths out there around women singing at the drum um i'm a big drum carrier i have been three times and uh i also carry a hand drum and uh along with these drums come songs and responsibilities so we have uh we have songs that go with um with everything literally you know like we have a morning song to greet the morning we we have songs for our animals and we have songs um just to say thank you and uh ceremonial songs uh, which we use and i guess you um in our ceremonies we have our our seasonal ceremonies right now it's it's spring so uh, a lot of people have just celebrated the new year uh, our new year is in the spring so we have songs for that also and um the myths around drumming uh, especially for women you know it's it's unheard of or unseen and it's controversial still at this time uh, uh we've been talking about you know like some of the, the history around it uh, how w- the drum came to be to the first nations people it, it came from a woman and it was passed on down to men and uh they they had the responsibility to to take care of the drum and um so now you see the woman coming back to the drum because um uh you see that there's a uh, an imbalance that is happening you know w- one of my teachers ha- had uh shared with me uh, many years ago um before he passed he said one side of the drum was made for a woman the other side w- was made for for man and uh and so that is what i i go by you know his his teachings um but in the beginning like i said when i first carried the drum uh, a lot of men were were not very happy and saying that's not your your role um so uh, i believe and i know this to be true a lot of our our men have adopted um mainstream way or patriarch way of thinking uh, whereas our women were very highly respected and um, were honored in 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 our traditional ways lo- of life I guess our traditions as as first nations people so <coughs> there's uh, some mixed up history there um, basically because uh, our history was written written by non non-indigenous people <laughs> and um and even if you look back at some of the journals uh there was uh, things written stating that you know the men would go and uh, sit in council with women and then come back with a decision so um um you know being that they came from a, a patriarch society they they did not like that uh, that the women were part of the decision making so I uh, see that the history uh, on and our even our traditions ha- have been um, aff- affected by colonization. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was saying just, uh, you know, as we've been doing more shows on colonization and I don't know more and, and well, it's a feminist show, so the women's movement, I, um, I often lament that for a uh, Western woman or what we would think of as European women, uh, you know, matriarchy has been gone for us for literally thousands of years and I, I'm a little envious <laughs> because First Nations women it was stolen from them too but it's a matter of hundreds of years as opposed to thousands so I think any hope we have of returning to that natural law will be through you know people in our First Nations community who who still have the memory of that existence in, in them. That's true. I mean, you know, you 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 take a course of history. That it's all it's always changing, but with um, the way that I know things is that we we have a blood memory that goes back to you know thousands of years also, and there's things that uh, come to face through you know our 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 oral history, and so um, they. Our elders, you know, some of our elders, they talk about that role and responsibility of uh, of our clan mothers, you know, of our our women having that that uh, decision making. They they always said, you know, th- our responsibility is to protect and and to bring the food into the home. It was the women who took care of the home and the community. And as you see it now, you know, like a lot of First Nations women have made a lot of changes out there in regards to their community. Mm -hmm. So that's still inherent, I guess you could say, that's still in their blood, that they still follow that, you know, that natural uh, instinct or that natural law of of taking care of things. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we do. We get it done. (laughs) That's what it comes down to is getting it done. When you talk about uh, uh, the clan system and that and the responsibilities, there are certain responsibilities that go by clan as well. Is oh. that? Oh, for sure. You know, like it, it, it's still very uh, alive out out um, out east. I I had the opportunity to meet a, a great woman by the name of um, Louise Wawate, and and she was a clan mother, um, meaning she's gone on. Uh, but I had the honor of meeting her, and then there's other clan mothers and and. Uh, that I met down east um, around Mohawk land. And so they still uh, go by that. And, and the decision-making comes t- uh, uh, from all the clans. Uh, it's like no clan is higher than the other. And and they they take the things to task that they need to do as a, in, in a community, but it's the clan mothers that, that take it a step further, you know, to speak out for the people and do what, what is necessary where whereas you know uh, not all the women are, are are part of it it's just the clan mother the head woman that will speak to to the issues and take care of the community in that way and so it's it's a uh, a group effort of all the clans that are are doing these things so i remember a time that i i was traveling down east and they they had a lodge um in in their community and Everybody had a place to sit, all the clans, uh, and it was so beautiful. And I thought, wow, you know, a lot of our people have forgotten these these roles and responsibilities, you know, due to the fact that, you know, history has, has done us harm and also has separated us from our own uh, roles and responsibilities and, and our own ways of governing ourselves. And um, this, by all means, wasn't due to our own, our, our own doing. It was... Uh, through the Indian Act, it was through the residential school that, you know, separated us from our, our, our roles and responsibilities, our identities, you know, our ceremonies, our songs, you know. They were outlawed, you know, through the Indian Act that we could not practice our traditional ways. So a lot of our people had to go underground to to practice our, our traditional ways. Well, and a good thing they did go underground and, and kept up the good work, so to speak, because we'd be lost without it now. You know, it would be gone. Oh, for sure. So, you know, um, uh, I'm really grateful that my ancestors um, had that ability to know that this was something very, very, uh, very true to who we are uh, and and very powerful and ancient and and real, 
you know, and, and knowing that they had to protect it any by any means possible, so they had to go underground. Oh, as sad as that is. Um, we're just going to have a short little break here for a commercial, and uh, we will be right back. And we're back. We're in uh, the studio today with Chickadee Richard and Jackie Robertsha. I'm Jen Unwin. And we're speaking on the drum <laughs> and its place, among many other things. Um, so we left off, Jackie. One of, one of the things that I found interesting when I started learning a little bit more about the traditions was, the, first of all, that the songs are, are not tunes, they're prayers. Um, and they're handed down through, through, they belong to certain families w- with connection with the clans. Oh yeah, there is there is songs for the clans like uh, like you just mentioned, and then uh, we inherit songs also, you know, um, passed on down. But there's also songs that are are meant for the people, uh, and helping them in their journeys. You know, for myself, uh, uh, I'm also a song carrier, which means I've been gifted with songs, and and that you know, in itself helped me and my family. And so my my songs are are sung all over, and um, I've also had blessings and and songs given to me by other nations. Uh, and as soon as they know that I'm a song carrier or a drum carrier, you know, not not all men are are against it. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, all the drums that were given to me were were made by men. And the, and these drums, it wasn't just the fact that I wanted a drum. It happened so that um, I had dreams, and I call them dream drums. <laughs> so these drums came through dreams, and uh, it was men who put them together and gifted this, these drums to me, but also uh, men who had blessed them. Uh, we, we did ceremony, you know, to have that those drums. They, they weren't just passed to us and saying, here's a drum, sing a song. You know, there's a whole whole protocol of things that we have to do in order to receive this this gift and so along that sometimes uh, like they say we 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 honor those songs uh, by giving gifts and also um, you know um, feasting the people because these songs they carry us you know they they come from you know our our history and uh, these families also you know they they honor us by passing these songs on to us to help us um in our community to help the community um i think there was you know just to to uh to say that you know drums are not new to 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 us as indigenous people you know like um it's it's not something that's just a phenomenon that you know first nations people um i know that every indigenous groups in 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 the world have drums mm-hmm. you know you 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 have the asian people that have drums you know, you, you have the African um, black people that have drums, you know, and you even have, you know, uh, you know, the the Celtic drums, which are of, um, you know, the, the white race. Mm-hmm. So these drums are, are all over the world. And I believe they ha- they have a purpose, you know, uh, in in all those groups, say, that um, the songs that we sing and how we drum is is not just, you know, pounding on on hide and and <laughs> sing it a, uh, sing in a tune you know these these things have a a meaning too they symbolize you know our relationship with uh with all life and creation yeah the a uh, very deep meaning i was told i don't know if this is true i was told um every time you begin to hit the drum you're in essence calling the ancestors is that like a complete myth or is there some truth to that there is truth to that. It's like you're you're sounding your drum uh, to to send uh, your songs or your prayers out there. Eh? Like we we know the drum as the first, you know, like it it represents that 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 heartbeat of of our mother, oh. uh, and and also stating that is like that's the first beat we hear when we're in in the womb is that that beat of the mother. So that drum represents that, um, and and so we have a connection you know, a forever connection to our mother and also our, our, our mother earth, you know, who's very important to us all, you know, you know, every indigenous nation knows, you know, that we, we need that relationship with our, our mother earth and that we have to, you know, um, 
walk and 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 respect her in in a good way. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I thought Jackie had something to add here. She's enthralled <laughs> by the conversation, which is wonderful. Uh, we're doing fabulous today. Thanks again, Chickadee. The drum as uh what a wonderful idea that really i find that extremely reassuring believe it or not this is the whole idea of the first sounds we become aware of is a beat and we can technically or conceivably you can take that idea and you can f- bring it throughout your entire life if, if you're ever out there uh, and, and you hear a drum uh, immediately you'll be attracted it doesn't matter if it's a first nations drum or but you you hear that sound of that drum and you'll be attracted to it. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a time that um, we were out at a, a, a one of our, our social gatherings, which is called a powwow, mm-hmm. and um, there was a bunch of um, um, non-Indigenous people there. And my, my daughter says, hey, Mom, those they, those people look like uh, Mennonites. And I said, where, where do you see Mennonites? And I was quite, like, looking all over the place. And, and then she goes, over there, and... I said, oh, you mean Hutterites, you know? <laughs> and, and this Hutterite community was there listening to the drum and, and enjoying it. And and so, you know, like, uh, I think they, they recognize the, you know, the beat of the drum and, and, it, and how soothing it is to them. And they were in, they're enjoying the our social gathering just as much as we were enjoying the social gathering. But I always tease my daughter and... I said, oh, university graduate, you know, <laughs> here, here you are, you don't know the difference between a Mennonite and a, and a Hutterite, eh? She goes, well, I've never seen them before, but, you know, I heard about them. And I said, yeah. She goes, I've mistaken that, you know, instead of a, a Mennonite, uh, you know, I said, I, I know they're Hutterites, she said, you know. When when we're talking about uh, the different gatherings and different uh, ceremonies, the powwow, and the you know the round dances that have been going on, is there differences between the music that that's used at those places? Oh, it definitely is. And like the round dances are, are are social songs where our people, but they're they're also used you know to honor our ancestors that have moved on. There's a story to how the round dance came to be, but it's not my my time to to share that story. It's uh, you know. But there's songs that go with that, uh, just as much as, you know, there's the songs that go with our ceremonies, our, our, our sweat lodges, you know, our, our women's gatherings, you know, we, we sing women's songs, you know, people forget that, you know, um, that we too carry songs, you know, that there's certain songs as women that we sing at certain times. Uh, it's like in, in the summertime, we, do, we don't sing Sundance songs, but we'll practice to learn them to know, you know, the, these songs are, are, are are part of our our praying in in that ceremony that that Sundance ceremony so a lot of times you know we 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 understand when we were to sing those uh, songs at appropriate times eh? okay got you is there individual songs songs made for individuals oh definitely yeah i uh, i have a song made for my son it's a lullaby you know yeah and um yeah we s- you know, people the, have their own songs uh, g- gifted to them, either by dream or by an individual themselves. You know, or by a family, and and the song will it's 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 a song that you'll carry for the rest of your life. You know, and it's up to you if you want to share it and pass it on to others. But uh, it does come. You know, for me, I believe that the songs are for the people, and they're not just for me. Mm-hmm. You know, that when I sing a song. Um, I'm reminded that, you know, there's certain people out there that need those songs to help them. Uh, a long time ago, our, our people gathered um, a- and at a time of mourning, and they would take their songs and their drums to, to the family and sing those songs to help alleviate some of that loss, that grief. Mm-hmm. You know, they would sing certain songs for the families. And they still do that, you know. I still, I still have family that go out and help families and sing their songs with them and 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 we have songs like i said uh, even in death we have s- certain songs that we sing for for our 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 loved ones that are moving on to the spirit world and th- those do you have s- i i must just go on here but that l- i was thinking that songs of remembrance for people that have passed yeah we have memorial songs too and um and so when we we uh, honor them yearly. We we also sing those songs in memory of them, or 
you know, we at, at our social gatherings, at our powwows, we we have songs in, in honor of the veterans. You know, we we have songs uh, to honor our women. You know, our our dancers. Uh, and so there's a song literally for everything. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like all the animals, plants, people. Yeah. No odes to the computer, though, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> and, and people saying, well, it's, it's just a bunch of chanting. No, there's, there's a, a, a symbolism and a, uh, a reason why these songs came. You know, like I remember when we first started singing um, way back when, and people saying uh, the chanters, you know, and I'm thinking... Well, um, there's a big difference, you know, when you're drumming and singing. These songs, uh, th- they come from somewhere, from ex- some experience. They they come from some, you know, some place, uh, a spirit of some sort. You know, like m- one of my songs, they c- they came from from the water. You know, um, and so uh, I I carry a song that honors all life, and uh, c- because without water, there there is no life, and. Uh, I've been very active in in the area of of, of you know ensuring that there is uh, water for the future of all, and so you know w- we do yearly yearly um, uh, I guess you could see reminders on Earth Day, and uh, our drums are out there. You know our, our women are singing out there. Mm-hmm. You know to to honor honor that that life and. Like I said, we have a Mother Earth Walk. Yeah, it's coming have, up. Yeah, the tenth uh, annual, tenth annual seventh generation walk is uh, coming up, and that's April twenty first. Yeah. yeah, and I'm hoping to see a lot of people out there, and you'll you'll see our drums, and you'll see you'll hear our songs, you know, and 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 that's in reverence to 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 life, and you know, and making sure that you know our children, our grandchildren are. Are 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 going to have the same, you know, clean waters as as we are having, you know, and you know, not they're not going to be drinking something that's that's going to poison them or harm them, or harm our environment. Oh, and it's it's something that needs to be um, pushed now because our waters are in deep deep trouble. Pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's uh, yeah, definitely. You know, like uh, with all the legislation that's coming through. You know, a lot of people are, are, are against it. And, and you see uh, how we're, we're doing it with Idle No More. You know, like we're mm-hmm. bringing our, our, our drums and songs back out where they're not going to be hidden anymore. That, you know, we're showing the world that we, we care, you know, for our Mother Earth. We care for our waters. We care for the generations to come. You know, we're taking our, our rightful responsibility, ensuring, you know, that... Uh, there is a future for all, you know, we're being responsible in some ways. I'm, you know, I was uh, speaking at an idol no more um, about a week ago, and I said, you know, we're, we're, we're being responsible and making sure that we have clean waters. And now, uh, where's your responsibility? You know, oh, I, yeah. I threw it back at them <laughs> eh? and saying, no, I can't, um, I'm, I'm here making sure that your children and your grandchildren are going to have clean water. Eh? Yeah, good one. Oh, it's something we all definitely have to come together on. Uh, just, f- you know, further to that uh, that walk that's coming up, um, it, it is, it's uh, it's celebrating voices of Indigenous women, and it's in solidarity with the Idle No More movement as well, and that was Sunday, April 21st. Um, we're starting at Central Park at 1230, and we're going over to Odina, Odina, i got to learn how to say that place. Odina. Uh, we'll, we'll be walking over to that, and there will be a water ceremony there. Um, is there anything you can tell us about the water ceremony? Well, our indigenous people have had that that um, that ceremony in in um, it, as part of our ceremonies. I guess it's the, the water is very intricate and enmeshed in our ceremonies. Eh? So um, that's a ceremony that w- is just women do. Uh, just women do that ceremony. You know they. they it's a it's a blessing to and and they they sing songs in reverence to the water also you know so that this this water will continue to give us life so, so those those songs and that that ceremony is something that's been passed down for the through the lines till now <laughs> oh for sure yeah i mean you know back home um i have one uh, one of the elders that that carry a, a song uh, like i'm originally from sandy bay um, Treaty One, 
territory, but there's there's all these reserves. They still carry those songs, you know, uh, the water songs, you know, to do the certain. They even have songs for the fire, oh, you know, to to start the fire, you know, and so our songs, you know, th they have no limit in in how we 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 pay reverence and respect to those things. Excellent. It's uh, eight thirty. And time for our weekly news roundup. In case you're just tuning in, you're listening to Say It Sista on CKUW 95.9. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we're back after the news. And um, when we left off, we were uh, speaking on the water uh, ceremony and songs with the drum about water. And how really, there's a song for everything. There is. Which is lovely, yeah. Yeah, and so... Um, I'm not going to know all those songs, but, you know, like uh, with the different nations that I've sat with, um, First Nations across uh, Turtle Island, I, I traveled extensively. And, and so I was privileged to sit with them in ceremony and hear their songs. And, and so in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed knowing that, you know, our people are still carrying on in the way that they are and, and that women are so, uh, so much part of it, you know, and, and also carrying on the songs, you know, to to our young women and and help and strengthen them through through song you know and um that's how i found my voice is is through song and uh to be able to go out there and, and talk about the issues that affect us as women but not only as women but first nations people so um we you know uh it's always opened with a song and then that's part of our our praying you know to to give that respect that um you know, there is a higher power, there is something greater than ourselves. And that uh, we believe that our ancestors, they, they, they walk with us eh, in the things that we do. And so we, we walk in our truth and we sing those songs, you know, to, to help the people, you know, our, our young women and knowing that, you know, these wrongs uh, should not be happening, that we, we need to, you know, correct them, you know, because... Um, uh, our First Nations women are, are going missing and, and, and murdered a lot more than um, mainstream, you know, society knows, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it's the first women, uh, First Nations women that are being being attacked and, and murdered and who knows w where some of them are, you know, they're, they're co you know, they're ov obviously, you know, um, somewhere out there and people know, you know, where they, they are. Somebody saw something. Yes, for sure. And so we sing our songs also for the murdered and missing women. We we never forget the, the things that we do, and where we we go. That we we talk about our our sisters that, uh, you know, have been taken from us uh, unnecessarily. You know that are a target of, of whatever kind of uh, sickness that, uh, you know, is out there that is uh, is hurting hurting them. Uh, it seems that this, uh, sometimes our society right now just it 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 the violence against the 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 mother earth is reflected in the violence against the women mm -hmm. you, you know there's oh. there's a connection there's a connection to those two things and just we we need to, we need to find solutions to it i also very much strongly believe that our brothers need to stand up it's violence against women is a male issue oh it is it, um it is, and, and a lot of times, you know, like it, it's a, the silent killer. Nobody really wants to look at it. You know, it's it, it's in right there in their back. Or it's, um, I think I mentioned, that, you know, the inconvenience truth. And, mm -hmm. You know, even the history part. You know, the history has not been told by us. You know, history has been told by uh, non-indigenous people who, who did us a great injustice. So the 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 injustice continues. You know, mm -hmm. like the myths around our our women that you know that we're less than human that you know like uh, our poor sister caroline st Clair, who, who whose life was taken you know and she she had a child within uh, her you know like oh. and so you you take a look at that you know like how 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 sick society is that there's no outrage about this you know there's no outrage about our sister thanks chickadee um no extremely tragic the situation in such a high higher percentage uh, you know of, of first nations women i'm sure there's lots of songs for them 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, we do memorial songs. We do healing songs. You know, we do honor songs for our women. You know, like these are th- we we have lullabies. You know, like I I, I co-produced a CD uh, um uh, last year, and in honor of singing, it's called for the love of singing. And so I co- co-produced a CD, and it's a uh, um a range of different people, um, men and women singing songs. And and it's a gift to the people, you know, to learn the songs. And it was also a fundraiser for our Sundance. Eh? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you know, um, wanting to give something back because that Sundance, you know, that ceremony gave me something. Uh-uh. So I wanted to give something back. So uh, I co-produced a CD with a bunch of different singers. And we had Grassy Narrows come out, their <laughs> drum group. They have a beautiful woman's drum group eh, in Grassy Narrows. So they came out and did a, a few songs with us. Uh, at one time, there was like... I think there was like 30 singers in that studio singing one song. And oh, it was wow. So, it sounded like one voice. So is this limited edition? I mean, can is it still available? Oh, yeah, it's still available. Um, I, I have a sister that sits at the drum that has the CDs, but they're for sale. So they're like, I, I believe they're 10 bucks a, a piece uh, for these CDs. And j- just amazing songs, uh, heart lifting, you know, um, warm songs that just, bring peace to you know your being and one of the songs like i said that was gifted to me is a lullaby it's in there nice. you know, i call it ninundua's lullaby it's my son's lullaby <laughs> nice my son is now 20 <laughs> <laughs> i still sing that song to my grandchildren he still he still does too he just doesn't tell his mom <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna stop for a real quick little break here and uh we'll be back shortly we were ending that that last interview part there. Uh, you were talking about uh, uh, um, Grassy Narrows and their their women's drum group. Uh, that's uh, something that's going. They are also some of those individuals will be at the walk on the twenty first as well too. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I believe that's there'll be some some people coming in from Grassy Narrows and hopefully I I, I believe they're on the um, the agenda to speak. You know they're still yeah. fighting the. The logging and I, I believe mining has gone into that place too. So, um, you know, all over our, our, our Mother Earth, there's there's destruction happening, and um, and when Mother Earth feels that too, um, you know that 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 destruction, we feel it too alongside as women because, you know, wh- what kind of a future are we leaving our children if we're we're not standing up to that destruction or, you know, to those legislations or or to those. Uh, things that are happening around us, you know. Um, mm, one of the Cree prophecies is that we, we're we not going to be able to eat money, eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. And you so can't breathe it or drink it either. Exactly. So um, I don't know the whole prophecy. I know that, you know, I've heard it before. Um, but we uh, as, as, as mothers, uh, as women, as life givers, you know, we have a responsibility to our children and our grandchildren to ensure you know, safe drinking water, you know, air, good air to breathe, you know, uh, safe playgrounds for them to be also, you know, some of the, the reserves are, are, are toxic because of chemical spills that have been left behind because of, uh, um, you know, companies going in multinationals and, you know, so, uh, a lot of our, our reserves are, are by, uh, by big um, industry, yes, exactly. Uh, industry of some type, manufacturing or something that's got some toxic byproduct. It's it's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's left behind, and so our people suffer with that. You know, so uh, uh, there's a lot against us as women. You know, First Nations women. You know, and and, and trying to displace us uh, further, I guess. You know, from our our rightful role and responsibilities as title holders of the land, you know, that w- that we, we were the ones who, who were given those those rights and responsibilities to, to take care of this land. Say. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of uh, uh, matriarchal, it's the land is the women. It the, is. The, you know, um, it, when we're looking at what's sort of politically happening right now, I mean, it's it's a it's a push. We've apologized. We, 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 we get part of the issues of the damage of colonization um we seem to still be doing it and when we talk about you know women women and their connections to the land that's one of the that's one of the things you're standing up for right now with with the politics that are happening i mean there's been another push through parts of africa to displace people off of their land 
predominantly women again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Philippines has set up its own reservation system for their indigenous. Like so much of of the women's connection to the land isn't just in that concept of ownership, if you know what I mean. No, it's a yeah. spiritual connection. Yeah, you know. And, 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 we were we were placed here, you know, all the indigenous groups that are all over the world, they were placed there. And then we had people that came to colonize and exploit and extract uh, uh, just for the sake of, of, of money, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. Eh? Profit. Exactly. <laughs> Power and greed. Oh, uh. for sure. I mean, that that surpasses, you know, the, the right of a, a child drinking clean water, you know, like every reserve in... Uh, I'm sure in in Canada, you know, there's over 633 reserves, you know, um, probably say 50% of them are drinking, you know, contaminated water. They're under boiling water advisories. So you you, you take a look at all the myths that, you know, and and the policies that are are targeting us as First Nations people. But it's not only going to affect us in the long run. (laughs) In the long run, it's going to be, you know, affecting everybody. So, you know. You know, it's... the multi the, the the corporations come along and and they create the toxic you know the pollutants or whatever and then we need another multi corporation to come along and fix the water that you just polluted how about we don't pollute it in the first <laughs> place you know oh, for sure <laughs> you I know mean, like, uh, it, it's 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 like uh, at this time it's it's uh, we're at a crossroads you know thinking that you know we're we're, we're not going to be affected but in the long run we're going to be affected you know. All life is going to be affected, and so, you know, as responsibility as a as a as a woman, you know, like uh, I bought this life into the world, and I want to make sure, you know, that my 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 children, my grandchildren, uh, are going to have the same privileges I've had. Yeah, yeah, very. Um, in you know, when I first began to become more active with um, environmental issues, and and now I'm into uh, feminist issues, but. It was like a switch just kind of clicked in my brain after, you know, my kids are getting older and i looking at them and I just said, you know, this is not right. I'm I'm not going out of this world, you know, saying, you know, I did not do something to improve the life of my kids or to preserve the future for, you know, all the kids yeah, everywhere. You yeah. know, like you, you think, you know, one of the one of our, our, our sisters had said, she says, I, I don't want my child coming to me and saying, what did you do, you know, to stop this from happening? You know, we have a responsibility to one another. And I thought that was such a, you know, a powerful statement. You know, she, she ah. passed on saying, you know, what did you do for, to protect my, p- my future? Eh? Yeah. And I mean, is it just us gals that think about this? <laughs> I mean, you know, I've never heard a man say that. Just... Huh? It is a feminist show. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but I'm just thinking about it, and I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. Really? Maybe it's because we feel it more. <laughs> now that the guys have heard our show. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I believe, you know, there there is brothers and, you know, grandfathers, uncles. There There is brothers that are, are, are part of this, you know, when... Louise Wawate was was taken away for protecting her lands, so and then she was charged and put in jail. You know, her her brothers stand stood beside her. Her 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 family of men stood beside her, but she was the one making the statement in in protection of that land. Eh? Mm-hmm. So I know our brothers are there. You know, and it's it's always been the women that have stood up and said that's enough. You know, like my sister Jo has mentioned that many times. Okay. That. Uh, that m- women are the ones who, 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 who make that stand first and saying that's enough, you know, and then our brothers come and follow and also stand with us, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not about, you know, them ahead of us or behind us. It's just that now they're starting to recognize, you know, our, our place, you know, as, as, as a matriarch society, something that was trying to, that they, they were trying to uh, hide away or oppress and, mm-hmm. and also, you know, condition our men to believe that, you know, a patriarch society. Uh, this is this is what it is, but it, it's not. It's not what it is. Yeah. You know, it's been hidden. Uh, you know that. Uh, you know, there is matriarch society that that still exists. Yeah. 
a relief to me. Um, okay. And don't forget that uh, Democracy Now! will be starting up after this. Uh, we're going to take the last few minutes, and we've we've asked Chickadee, will you sing us a song? Oh, for sure. But just before I sing a song, I, I just want to uh, say that um, I'm not a good sister, I'm not a good mother, I'm not a good grandmother, if I'm not doing anything uh, to protect the future of my children and my grandchildren. And um, I have a responsibility as a woman uh, to be that good sister so that, you know, our, our women will know that their lives are sacred also. Mm-hmm. That our, our First Nations women, you know, matter uh, as much as society doesn't want to acknowledge that, that our, our First Nations women are sacred to just as any life that is on this earth. Miigwech. Thank you. for my sisters, the murdered and missing women. to my sisters that are missing out there and those ones that have left us that have been murdered tragically. Miigwech. <laughs> 